Welcome. Nature is all around us here at Woolerton. The garden and grounds are my favourite part. I love sitting under one of the old trees, sometimes reading, sometimes taking a walk, breathing in nature, questioning, wondering, enjoying. I'm Cassandra. I keep house here at Woolerton, and this is my story. My great-great-grandfather, Sir Francis Willoughby, built this hall. A generation on, there was a terrible fire here in 1642. And one year later, my great-grandfather, Percival, died here. His son, and heir to Woolerton, was already settled in Warwickshire. And my father was at Middleton, unless he was travelling, of course. So the hall remained shut up for 44 years. Then, after a court battle for his inheritance with our stepfather, my brother Francis moved here, and I joined him in 1687. He was 18, I was 17. We immediately set about repairing the damage caused by the fire, and we made changes to the gardens and the grounds. My father, Francis Willoughby, dedicated his whole life to the study and classification of the natural world. He was an outstanding naturalist. My mother, Emma, and my father's friend, John Ray, also tell me of his wide interests, including architecture, languages, and even games. Sadly, my father died when I was only two years old, so I never really knew him, except through his notebooks and sketches and natural history collection. Eventually, I bought them here, from Middleton, and I have been cleaning, sorting, cataloguing them ever since, whenever I get the opportunity, alongside writing our family history. But that's another story. My father is the most well-known of our family. You see, he wanted to discover and to explore. He thought that there should be some order or pattern to the thousands of different plants and animals he saw around him. For him, to discover that order was to discover more of the wisdom of God who created the universe and our place within it. So, my father and his old tutor and friend John Ray travelled around England and Europe collecting specimens of birds, plants, animals, fish to see what was really there. They made detailed drawings and notes, and then named and catalogued everything. It's what his notebooks are full of. Their discoveries now help people all over the world in their study of nature. He simply wanted to understand what he loved. And there is still so much we don't know about this dynamic, ever-changing natural world around us. So many questions, so much intrigue. Generations later, the family sold the Woolerton estate and in 1926 the hall became the city's much-loved new natural history museum. Today, dedicated staff are continuing to collect and preserve biological and geological material from Nottinghamshire and elsewhere. We display specimens from many parts of the world including plants, animals, rocks, minerals and fossils. The collection is invaluable for helping people who wish to identify specimens they have found for scientific study, for inspiration by the many artists who visit the museum and for both formal and informal education. It also enables our visitors to simply enjoy all that's wonderful in the natural world. We are also developing an extensive database on the natural history of Nottinghamshire, including wildlife and geology. This helps to protect endangered species, habitats and geological sites by informing developers and others of what is important in particular areas. But what about you and your search? for natural connections. I've been keeping stick insects for about 30 years or so, and I've donated quite a few specimens to the museum here. I've actually had three species named after me. It's a white colour itself, but when light hits it, um, you see purple, green, oranges. 
They'd found it on the beach, it was still alive. I jumped in the car, drove out there straight away. So far I've found over 330 uh, different sorts of larger moth living here at Orland Park. They were swimming in warm tropical seas over 400 million years ago. I used to work with Don Sharp, the taxidermist here, and uh, was visiting him regularly when he prepared the eagle. We have no idea where the roots of it were because we didn't dig it out from the Eastwood Bypass. It's still there. I chose a leopard because I like cats and leopards and things, and I like the pattern of their fur and stuff. Their fragility, the colours of them, the translucency, absolutely beautiful. The specimen calcites that are prized by collectors are crystallised or coloured. And this is a this is colourless but very nicely crystallised piece. And I didn't know that they were more of an underwater animal than an on the land animal. And they, they survive better underwater than on land. I've got quite a few ammonites. Some of them are only over a million years old. It has a beautiful form, and the form helps you to see inside the shell as well as outside the shell. We've got a very good, strong collection of seed fern fossils from around this area, from the Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire collieries. I just wondered how the mammoth ate and did things with teeth that big. You can identify it, all the volumes are there, the texture of the skin, it's, it's really impressive. Once you had the experience of seeing a, a, a footprint that old, you're bound to just want to research it more.